to all. I am Uma Sharma, Assistant Professor in EC Department, Ajay Kumar Garhi Engineering College. Today in this lecture, we will discuss the active filter, which is a topic of Unit 5. And it is very, very important um, when, um, it is very important for the exam point of view. These are the content of my uh, lecture. First, we will see what is the active filter, then different types of filter, then filter responses and also here we will discuss first and second order low pass and high pass filters. So, uh, basically filter is a circuit by which we can filter out some frequency and if we use some active device in that circuit, then we can increase the gain also. So, uh, active filter, if I define active filter, active filter are the circuits by which we can filter the particular band of frequency and also we can increase the gain along with the frequency selection. So, uh, if we classify these filter, so uh, broadly we can classify into two categories. One is analog filter. If the input is analog in nature, then this is call, called as analog filter and if it is uh, if the input is digital in nature, then the filter is known as digital filter. Also, the analog and di digital filter can be subdivided into four uh, another categories depending on the frequency band. So, based on the frequency selection, again we can classify a filter into four categories, low pass filter, high pass filter, band stop filter and band pass filter. So, one by one we will see. So, here in this slide you can see that one is ideal brick wall filter where this blue line shows the cutoff point. This is the cutoff frequency. That means before this cutoff frequency all the frequency will be passed. So, this is pass band. And after this cutoff frequency, the circuit will reject or attenuate all the frequencies. So, this is known as a stop band. But practically, if we design a practical filter, the response will be like this, where there is a transition from pass band to stop band. So, here this transition time is 0, but here the transition time is this one, here to here. So, based on that, we can define the filter responses. So, uh, the slide shows the ideal filter responses. So, for low pass, this band where we can pass all the frequencies is known as pass band and the band in which the filter attenuate all the frequencies is known as stop band. So, for the low pass, this is the pass band and this is the stop band after omega c. Omega c is the cutoff frequency. Uh, if we talk about the high pass filter, so in high pass filter, as the name suggests, the filter will pass the high frequencies. So, here we have set a cutoff point which is omega c. So, after this high frequency, this frequency we have considered as high. So, after this high frequency, the filter will pass all the frequencies and below this omega c, the filter will attenuate all the frequencies. So, this is known as a stop band. Similarly, we can define the uh, response for the band pass filter. So, here you can see in this slide, there is a pass band, there are, there are two stop bands. The first stop band at the lower frequency side and second stop band at the higher frequency side. So, here this filter will select a particular band of frequency between omega C1 and C2 and the frequency which lies between this band will be passed and the frequency other than these, this frequency band will be attenuated by this filter. That is why this filter is known as band pass filter because it is designed to pass a particular band of frequency. If we uh, invert the response of band pass filter, then we can implement band stop filter. So, here you can see that there are two pass bands, whereas in case of band pass filter, there are two stop bands. So, here there are two pass bands and this filter is designed particularly to stop 
the some range of frequency so in between omega c1 to omega c2 the filter will stop the frequencies that means the filter will not pass these frequencies although the filter can pass the frequency from 0 to omega c1 and the frequency which lies after the omega c2 so band stop filter is having two pass bands and one stop band so now uh, we are discussing about the active filter but we can design the filter using active component as well as the passive component so there are again based on the uh, component used to design the filter the filter can be categorized into two category one is passive filter and second was the active filter which we are discussing in this lecture so uh, just 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 uh, have an idea about the passive filter so basically passive filters are the filters which are designed particularly to pass or stop some particular band of frequency using the passive component r l and c so in passive filter we use only these component to design the to filter operation so uh, here we can use r and c on the ic as we already aware but inductor is a big problem because of its physical size and large values which are required to implement that particular filter and generally the uh, size of inductor is very large so the um, area requirement of passive filter is high also they are very expensive and definitely the losses are more when we compare it with the active filters and use of l because it can produce electromagnetic effect so that is very very uh very very lossy system so that's why we avoid to uh, use passive filter so uh, here we are discussing active filters in passive filter there is another problem the uh, filter can filter out the frequency but it cannot magnify the amplitude so in case of passive filter we need to add some amplifier after the filter stage whereas in case of active filter we can Uh, remove the amplifying stage because the active filter itself the combination of amplifier and the filter so here the there are some features of active filter no inductor is required we can use op amp resistor and capacitor to design active filter here we will use op amp as a um, as an active element although we can use Uh, mosfet and bjt but opam because here the gain is very high so generally we use operational amplifier to design the active filter definitely it provide gain the design is very easy and use of opam can provide very high input impedance and that can uh, prevent the loading effect and the circuit can provide the low output impedance so the filter is less affected by the load so here the active filter in active filter we can adjust the range over a wide frequency so we can get the desired response the active filters are having many applications they can be used in communication and signal processing also we can use these active filters in entertainment industry medical electronics etc so using of opam as i have already told you there are many advantage of using this opam because it is a active device with very high gain very high input impedance and very low output impedance so the use of operational amplifier can reduce the size and weight that can increase the reliability then can improve the performance and definitely you know, the design of uh, opam is very simple and the frequency range is very wide so operational amplifier is preferred active element to design the active filter some disadvantages are also there of using opam because uh, there is a limited bandwidth uh, of the opam slew rate is another problem so but there are more advantage of using opam as compared to disadvantages so we prefer opam to design these low pass high pass band pass band reject filters so here this slide shows the practical responses of the uh, uh, different active filters so practically we can see that this is the maximum gain 
over which the filter is able to pass the frequencies. So, for the low pass, this is the maximum gain. At 3 dB gain, when the gain reduces by 3 dB, this is the point which is known as cutoff frequency, the gain start reducing. So, here you can see that practically there is a roll off rate and that depends upon the number of poles in the circuit. So, if we are designing um, filters using one RNC component using only one RC combination, then this gain roll off rate is 20 dB per decade. Further, we will see in detail. So, here in practical response, there is a constant or there is a fixed roll off rate by which the gain uh, start reducing and goes up to the 0. So, this is pass band and this is the stop band. So, here in stop band we get some frequencies, but when we talk about the ideal response, this is the uh, response which is represented by dotted line. Similarly, you can see the high uh, pass filter response for the practical case. This is the practical response for band pass filter where uh, the pass wind is represented by this dotted curve where at in the stop band there is a constant gain roll off. Similarly, the stop band here you can see that the practical response. This is very very important. The filters can be designed for Butterworth response, for Wiesel response or Chebyshev response. If we compare all these three responses, one is represented by blue color line, dark, this, this blue color. And here you can see that this response is for the low pass filter. So, here at the pass band, in the pass band, the damping is more. This represents the damping. So, for Chebyshev filter, the more damping in the pass band. So, that is why generally we do not use this filter in general applications, although in case of Chebyshev filter, the gain roll off rate is very high. Here you can see that. So, to meet the uh, uh, to, to meet the ideal filter response, this Chebyshev filter can be preferred. But in pass band, there is a damping. Similarly, you can see for the vessel filter, this green color line, here you can see that the response is uh, although flat in the pass band, but the gain roll off rate is very slow. So, you can see that there are more fluctuation in the stop band if we compare this uh, with the vessel and the butter width because here the this width is high as compared to other, do, other two responses. And last one is the Butterworth response which is represented by this blue color line which lies in between vessel and the Chebyshev. Here you can see that the response is flat in the uh, pass band and although the gain roll off rate lie between vessel and the Chebyshev, so generally we prefer Butterworth response to design the active filter. So here, uh, we, uh, here you can see that the low pass filter, so here in low pass filter, there one R and C component is used. So, passive, uh, if we want to design passive filter, so this is the circuit for passive low pass filter. Now, we want to design the active filter. So, we will see how we can implement this response, how we can get this response using the active element uh, to design this filter. So, this I have already discussed pass band where the uh, uh, of the filter is the range uh, of the frequency that are allowed to pass through the filter with the minimum attenuation. Whereas, uh, this is show this is the transition region where the gain reduces from highest to lowest. A stop band is the range of frequency that we want to attenuate by this filter and critical frequency or cutoff frequency is the frequency uh, at which the gain is reduced by 3 dB only. So, uh, this is the circuit for first order low pass filter. So, here the order of filter means the number of R and C used in the circuit. So, here in this circuit, 1 R and, and 1 C is used. So, this is single pole low pass filter or this is first order low pass filter. So, for the designing of low pass filter, the connection of R and C will be like this. The R is directly connected to the input voltage and C is connected at the op-amp terminal and second terminal of the 
capacitor is grounded. Here you can see that the OPAM is connected in inverting configuration. And here a feedback is provided at the negative terminal and because this filter, uh, because of this negative field feedback, this circuit is similar to the inverting amplifier configuration. So, for the inverting amplifier, the gain is represented by minus RF by R input. So, here RF is R1. So, for this circuit, the gain is R minus R1 upon R2. So, along with the frequency selection, the circuit is able to provide a gain of R1 by R2. You can set the value of R1 and R2 as per the requirement. So, here the cutoff frequency is determined by the value of R and C and uh, just by changing the value of R and C, we can change the cutoff frequency. And because here the single pole is used, so here the gain roll of rate, gain roll of rate can be achieved of 20 dB per decade. That is for Butterworth filter. That is for Butterworth filter. So here for this circuit, if I derive the expression, so we find that the cutoff frequency Fc will be equal to 1 upon 2 pi Rc. And here the bandwidth is what? If we see the uh, this diagram, you can see that this is the Fc and the lower value is 0. So, if I define the bandwidth of this circuit, so the bandwidth will equals to Fc minus 0. So, the bandwidth is represented by Fc. So, for the low pass filter, the bandwidth is Fc and the cutoff frequency is 1 upon 2 pi Rc. So, uh, if number of pole uh, increased in the system because uh, uh, the number of poles determine the role of rate of the filter or the uh, number of pole determine the order of the filter. So, for the first order filter where the single pole is used, the gain role of rate is 20 dB per decade. If, uh, if we introduce another RC combination in the filter, then the filter is known as second order filter or two port filter and here the gain role of rate will be 40 dB per decade. Similarly, for the third order filter, the gain roll of rate will be 60 dB per decade. So, if uh, if we increase the number of poles or if we increase the order of the filter, so you can see that the filter response approaches to the ideal response. So, here for the 20 dB per decade, the transition period is more, whereas second order filter, the transition period is less. And if we design third order filter, the transition uh, period is very less. So, uh, if we increase the order of filter, then the response will be uh, more similar to the ideal response. So, we can increase the order of filter just by cascading the number of stages. So, here this is first order. Again, this is first order and this is also first order. One RC component is used over there another RC, another RC. So, if I increase, if I uh, connect three <coughs> first order filter in series, then the order of filter will be equals to 1 plus 1 plus 1. So, that means it is third order filter. So, for the third order filter, the gain roll of rate will be minus 60 dB per decade for the low pass filter. So, this is how we can increase the order of filter. Also, if we, uh, there are um, a saline key design of the second order filter and here you can see that the saline key second order filter where on a single op-amp there are two RC combination or two poles are introduced. So, in the previous slide we have seen that we can implement second order filter using the two op-amp. So, if uh, here the number of components are more because we have to use two operational amplifier to design the second order filter. But in this design, using a single op-amp, we can implement a second order operation. That means the circuit is able to provide the minus 40 dB per decade gain roll off. So, here again for the low pass response, RA and CB are connect, RB and CB are connected and here RA and CA are also added. So, this can provide the two pole operation. 
at the inverting terminal the connections are same here r1 and r2 are used to provide the gate and again this uh, again this is connected in the inverting configuration so gain for the circuit will be again the gain will be equals to minus r1 upon r2 but for the second order filter the cutoff frequency can be defined as fc equals to 1 upon 2 pi under root of ra rb cacb if ra equals to rb equals to r and if ca equals to cb equals to c in that case the cutoff frequency can be defined as 1 upon 2 pi rc which is similar to the first order filter so cutoff again using by changing the value of r and c we can change the cutoff frequency of the filter and we can design the filter as our requirement now let's see the high pass response so for high pass filter designing uh, again for first order one r and c uh, pair is used but here the position of r and c are interchanged so in place of r a capacitor is used in place of uh, c a resistor is used and so the the response will be like this here this is the transition period this is pass band and this is stop band so if we add this passive network at the non inverting node of operational amplifier then we can implement the high pass response so here for this circuit uh, actually in the low pass filter uh, i am extremely sorry we have seen that the feedback is connected at negative but the uh, input is connected at non inverting node so that will be 1 plus the gain will be 1 plus r1 by r2 not uh, minus r1 by r2 similarly for this first order uh, circuit the gain will be 1 plus r1 by r2 because input is connected at the non inverting node so it is a uh, non inverting amplifier although feedback is negative so amplifier is non inverting but feedback is negative so for non inverting amplifier as the gain is 1 plus r1 by r2 so here for the high pass response also the gain of the circuit will be 1 plus r1 by r2 and the cutoff frequency can be derived as 1 upon 2 pi rc the derivation of the circuit is very very easy because we can find the value of voltage over there and this can be written as V in into R. If I find the value, suppose it is V A. So, V A will be equals to V in by R upon R plus 1 upon J omega C. And just if I multiply this V A with this gain, then we can find out V output. And if we uh, divide V output upon V input, then we can get the transfer function. And if I compare the transfer function with the first order transfer function then we can find this cutoff frequency 1 upon 2 pi rc which is similar to the first order low pass filter similarly we can implement the second order uh, active high pass filter here the two poles are introducing at the non inverting node of op amp so this is similar to the low pass filter and again feedback is connected at the inverting terminal although this is non inverting configuration of the op amp so the gain will be 1 plus r1 by r2 for the second order high pass filter the cutoff frequency can be derived using the uh, use, by solving this network this rc network we can calculate the cutoff frequency so this fc can be given as 1 upon 2 pi ra rb cacb if ra equals to rb and that is equals to r and CA equals to CV and that is equals to C then this cutoff frequency can be defined as 1 upon 2 pi RC. So uh, this is the designing of second order high pass filter. So there are many advantage of using this active filter over the passive because this circuit contain the op amp. So the active filter can be designed to provide the required gain and hence the uh, signal attenuation is very less or there is no signal attenuation because we can amplify the signal and op amp is used so the first uh, stage of the op amp is having very high input impedance and very uh, the circuit is having very high gain 
So, attenuation is very less because of this high input impedance. No loading problem again due to the high input impedance and the low uh, output impedance of op amp, the circuit is having very less uh, <coughs> uh, loading effect or there is no uh, loading effect. It is very easy to adjust the filter uh, over the wide range of frequency without altering the desired response because uh, it is very easy to um, change the gain of the op amp as we can see that suppose we want to design a op amp with a gain of 2. So, for this circuit gain is 1 plus R1 by R2. So, if R1 equals to R2 the gain of the filter will be 2. It is very simple. If I want to design a filter with a gain of 4 or with a gain of 5, then it is very simple. If I want to design a filter for gain of 3, then you can increase the value of R1. If R1 to if 2 R1 is equals to R2, in that case the gain will become 3. So, this is how we can we can uh, control the gain of the circuit and definitely by changing the value of R A, R B and C A C V, we can uh, adjust the cutoff frequency. So, this is how we can change the cutoff, cutoff frequency also. Uh, on this topic, uh, you can find some numerical in the uh, paper. So, for the designing of filter, we are having some steps. By following these steps, we can design any kind of filter. So, for example, let us say, let us see the designing of first order filter. So, for example, this is first order filter. So, first step you have to follow just select the cutoff frequency Fc and that can be equals to 1 upon 2 pi Rc. This Fc equals to 1 upon 2 pi Rc. If cutoff frequency is known to you, you can calculate the value of R and C, but here both two are the, uh, both two parameters are unknown. So, just assume capacitor C equals to C which is less than or equals to 1 microfarad. You can select any value which is less than or equals to 1 microfarad. So, just putting the value you can calculate R from there using this formula. So, this is the designing of this R and C. Now, let us see how can uh, we design the gain circuit. Gain circuit means we have to find the value of R1 and R2. So, if it is given in the question that you have to design a filter for the gain of 2, that means for the gain of 2, this is the formula for gain. So, for gain of 2, this R1 by R2 must be equals to 1 and this R1 uh, by R2, if R1 by R2 equals to 1, that means R1 should be equals to R2. So, you can derive the relation between R1 and R2 depending on the gain given in the question. And here you can uh, you can select the value of R value of input impedance that is R2 for the circuit that can be less than or equals to 100 kilo ohms. So, just selecting the value of R less than or equals to 100 kilo ohm, you can find out the value of R1 and R2. So, this is how you can design any filter. So, for the second order also, you can use these formulas and these are the four steps by which you can design the filters. So, uh, in this lecture, we have seen that the designing of active low pass and high pass filter where we have discussed the first order filter and second order filter using the operational amplifier. And also we have seen that if we add the multiple stages in the series, so we can increase the gain as well as we can increase the order of filter. But if we uh, cascade the first order filter, um, then the number of component requirements are more. That is why we have uh, seen the circuit which is implementing using single op amp. So, by using the combination of second order and first order, you can implement any order of filter. So, multiple order uh, can be implemented using these two uh, uh, components, first order filter and the second order filter. So, um, active filters are very, very important um, for the exams. So, all the best. Thank you so much.